From its early origins, mankind has been confronted with the harsh laws of evolution. Surviving in an often hostile environment has meant not only confronting imposing threats and invisible pathogens, but also resisting against environmental challenges, such as the constant exposure to UV radiations. How and why was this made possible? mostly with the help of the amazing legacy of the evolutionary process, namely, our immune system. To see one of mankind's best kept secrets in action, let's follow these photons into our skin. When the photons of UV light hit the skin cells, an oxidative stress occurs. This causes free radicals to be released, which damage the cell DNA. These damages are mostly incurred by UVA. However, if we travel further on, we can also see that UVB may directly attack the DNA. These aggressions induce dimerization of adjacent pyrimidine bases and a torsion of the DNA molecule. As a result, cell repair mechanisms such as the tumor suppressor gene P53 are expressed. P53 will attempt to either induce DNA repair or cell apoptosis. However, the P53 gene may itself be inactivated by UV rays. Now, as our transformed cells begin to proliferate, another defense mechanism is activated, our immune system. The local immune reaction is primarily mediated by these Langerhans cells. Having detected the transformed cells, the dendritic cells of our immune system recruit a large number of Th1 lymphocytes, which in turn induce natural killer cells and cytotoxic T cells. These natural killer cells and cytotoxic T cells will then attack the tumor and try to eliminate it from the skin tissues. However, UV radiations also induce the release of immunosuppressive cytokines which inhibit the activity of dendritic cells and their recruitment of Th1 lymphocytes. This leads to a downregulation of the immune response and favors the proliferation of transformed cells such as these ones. As we travel backwards, we can say that this cancerization process occurs in every part of exposed skin. Some lesions being visible, some invisible. This phenomenon is called field cancerization. So following UV irradiation and progressive immunosuppression, neoplastic transformation of the field may lead to the development of non-melanoma skin cancer, such as basal cell carcinoma, actinic keratosis, which could progress towards squamous cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma. An immune response is normally triggered to fight against the transformed cells. Dendritic cells and macrophages have been activated but UV radiations have partially down-regulated this natural immune process. Imiquimod acts as follows. Imiquimod binds to the toll-like receptor 7 present at the surface of these immune cells. This binding has multiple effects. It stimulates the innate immunity by releasing cytokines such as interferon alpha. This induces a dominant Th1 cell mediated immune response. As we can see, Th1 cells in turn activate natural killer cells which are very effective against tumors. Imiquimod stimulates the adaptive cell-mediated immunity through different mediators such as interleukins and other cytokines. Imiquimod will also stimulate the antigenic activity of Langerhans cells and their migration. This enhances further the immune response towards the precancerous lesion. Secondly, it also appears that Imiquimod induces an apoptosis of transformed cells without affecting normal keratinocytes. So by helping our immunity through this multiple mode of action, Imiquimod has shown to achieve tumor regression in skin lesions, such as actinic keratosis and superficial basal cell carcinoma. 
Following use, most patients will have a local skin reaction, which is a sign that the immune system has been stimulated locally by the immune response modifier imiquimod. This reaction will disappear or regress once the immune response modifier imiquimod isn't present anymore and the immune system returns to its normal state, leaving in the end excellent cosmetic results. Let's continue our journey in the skin tissues to meet another actor, these human papillomaviruses or HPV. By infecting these basal cells, HPV can induce an uncontrolled replication process of transformed cells. If these HPV are of subtype 6 or 11, this leads to the formation of external genital warts. This will also trigger an immune response from our organism. By binding to the TLR at the surface of the immune cells, Imiquimod stimulates the innate and adaptive cell-mediated immunity which targets the HPV-infected cells. Moreover, by stimulating dendritic cells' activity and the subsequent cytokine release, Imiquimod appears to have an indirect antiviral activity. As a result of this combined mode of action, Imiquimod is an effective treatment of external genital warts with a low recurrence rate. Millions of years of evolution has brought us a fantastic gift, our immune system and its cascade of helping cells. Today, by boosting or assisting these helping cells with Imiquimod, we can set a milestone in the treatment of actinic keratosis, superficial basal cell carcinoma, and external genital warts.